Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you, Mr. Can you sign my school pattern? Thank you. Sorry. Killer. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Chloe? 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 Yeah, see you around. My name's Denise. Chloe. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, your flights are coming here. Yeah, I'm at Wales. Chloe, can I have my marker back? Okay, I'll see you around. Yeah. 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 What a spectacular movie. Thank you. And how excited are you to be here at TIFF to share it with the world? I'm so excited just to have TIFF as like a platform to be the first introduction to this film is so meaningful because like you you know the TIFF doesn't pick bad movies. And so it's it's like a it's like a really nice compliment to kind of have our start here. Um, this movie is it's just a very special, very near and dear to my heart and you know um, as a Chinese woman, as a woman, um, there's so much representation um, in this film, so I'm very excited. Talk about the fact that it's really the first major animated film yeah. led by women and yeah. your character. Produced by women, written, directed by a woman, you know, starring a woman and of, and of, and of Chinese or Asian heritage. We haven't had that since Mulan, um, who I happen to work with for the past seven years, so I've got some tips, you know, which is nice. Um, but it's, uh, what I love about it is it, it's all of those things, but it's not at all. It's really just a heartwarming story that's completely relatable. So even though it's breaking boundaries in every way, it's still totally just a great movie. So there's, I, th I feel like the moving forward in this direction for the industry is really important because the film is not called A Little Chinese Girl goes on a journey in China it's called abominable it's really a it's a much of it's more of a universal story and the point is is that you can have things directed and written starring women and it can be a completely universal story and that's why you know the film I think is very special thank you thank so you thank you thanks so much Thank you for signing my school planner. Thank you for signing my school planner. Can you see the other one too? Can you sign the poster, please? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Can you sign mine as well? I love the color of your dress. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice dress. Lose my feet. Did Mark pick it up? Did Mark pick it up? Chloe, can I get one up here? Chloe, can I get one up here? That's what we've got. Chloe, just Chloe. Can I get a photo? Yeah. Your quakes are coming here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hopefully they let me keep it. Yeah. Chloe, I'm wearing your fight like a girl shirt. Yeah, let's get a picture. Yeah, take, can I get a photo? Okay. Can I have a photo? Chloe, Chloe. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. 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 Chloe.
name is Bennett. Can I have a picture with you, ma'am? Thank you, Chloe. Miss Chloe, can I have a picture with you? Can I have a picture with you? Yeah, you can just take it while we walk, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Can I get a picture with you, please? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really going. Can you? I really feel like I've committed to this line. And can you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I do the stuff? Yeah, yeah, have it all out. Yeah, can I do the one stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Front of the dress, front of the dress, that's it. Congratulations, that's it. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. That's great. Yeah. Be over the shoulder, you like a bit over the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, we just have very set poses, so there we go, there we go. Twenty seven years. It's this dress, it's not the
start with uh, Chloe Bennett. Come on out. Played ye. Woo. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what was I thinking? We're completely lost. Everest is nowhere near his mountain and for all we know, Jin could be in trouble right now. <sighs> it's all my fault. Jin said this trip was a crazy idea and maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Maybe I'm all kinds of crazy. I mean, we could really use him right now. <laughs> that was awesome. There is a difference, okay? Fine, because in the morning, Peng and I are headed back to the city. I can't leave him. Dude. You've seen what he can do. He's amazing. I mean, he's, he's magical. Don't worry, okay? We will make sure you get home. What are you gonna do, Yi? Take him all the way back to Mount Everest? Maybe I am, Jin. He needs to get back to his family. <gasps> no. <laughs> it's okay, Everest. It's, it's, it's just a koi fish. Why are they swimming against the current? Well, they're actually trying to get back home. Wow. It looks hard. It is, it is hard. That's why they are the symbol of perseverance. <laughs> hey, Yi. You know I can smell you from all the way over here, right? Like, you can talk, I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry, is there any aftershave left, or did you use the whole bottle? Oh, why? Uh, you hoping to borrow some? Yeah, not sure it'll work. Very funny. You guys want to work out some of this tension on the court? <laughs> Forget it, Peng. We wouldn't want to mess up Jin's hair. And um, last but certainly not least, um, I, this is our main actor in the movie. She and I really bonded over the fact that when I was younger, I grew up watching a lot of 
Disney movies, a lot of princess movies. But I'm telling you, from a girl who grew up in California, who was a surfer, a skateboarder, and a tomboy, there was not much in the princess movies that I could relate to. So it was very important to me to create a main character that was strong, independent, and really could drive this film. Um, she, the character is a tomboy, and Chloe Bennett very much shared this with me, and she fully embodied this character. And so, come on out, Chloe. Um, yeah. She's a rock star. Um, so basically, without further ado, we are thrilled as a team up here to bring you the second public viewing of Abominable. I'm telling you about my dogs. How much time do you have? Yeah, what I love about the film is it's it's about three Chinese kids. It's, it's about a, a young Chinese woman kind of dealing with grief and finding herself and finding her relationship with other people and with her family. And it totally takes place in China. It shows off how beautiful China is, but it's also not about that at all. There's so much of the Chinese culture is featured, but it's not like the movie's called Young Chinese Girl Goes Across China. It's called Abominable. It's, called, it's about... It normalizes a culture that for me is normal in a way that I think is important for the industry to move forward. That it's not, it's featured, but it's its so much more about that. Like being Asian in the industry isn't a, isn't a trend, um, which I feel like it can tend to be. Whereas this one is just a really authentic story and it happens to take place in this beautiful country. And we're seeing a different version of China. It's, you know, we're seeing all these amazing like Usually you think of cityscapes, which is portrayed so well, but it's also so much of, of other parts that we don't really get to see. So I love that it's so much about that, but then also not at all. It's also a story about kind of coming into your own as a young woman and as, as young kids and um, discovering family, so. I'm telling you about my dogs. How much time do you have? I'm going to show you thousands of pictures. My dogs are a hybrid of, of of Everest, kind of, because I have a French Bulldog, and then they're just very, I also grew up with Tibetan Mastiffs. So, really? yeah, so wow. I grew up with a, a Tibetan Mastiff and then Bull Mastiffs, and Kitty, our Tibetan Mastiff, <laughs> was 200 pounds, <laughs> wow. and she was huge, and I used to, like, you know, ride her <laughs> Like, we would, like, saddle her. I would, I'm gonna probably get in trouble for that, but I was very small. <laughs> Um, but it, there's a lot of sequences in, in the movie where I'm like, ah, like <laughs> flying all over Shanghai on Everest. And so, you know, had a real life, yeah. Went really meta, cool. yeah. Yi is curious and stubborn and she is kind of lost. And um, this movie is really kind of an ode to every little tomboy who, you know, would watch a princess movie and be like, that was cool, but I, I'm not sure how much I relate to that. And you know, Jill wrote this as kind of a love note to all of those girls or boys who want to see girls like that. Or, you know, it just opens up the, the it, it gives people a different idea of what you can be. You kind of think that the whole journey is about Yi helping Everest get to his home. And in reality, she, they were both helping each other. Just her being this feisty, young Chinese girl who was ambitious and confident and kind of not sure what she, she knows what she wants, but she wasn't sure how to get it. And you just, I never grew up seeing that on camera. I never connected with princesses on screen. I never felt like that was something that I saw in myself and so, the idea that this movie, that Abominable, and that Yi as a character will inspire young girls to feel um, okay with themselves is really exciting. I would describe her as like an introverted extrovert, and I would say the same thing about myself, where I'm, you know, she would rather spend time with herself than around people that she doesn't feel inspired by or feel um, like she has a connection with, and I feel very similar to that. Um, and I just, I think we have the same curiosity and I think we have the same kind of want, longing for something um, bigger and more profound. And I think that, um, I hope that that inspires 
young girls to um, <laughs> not think that the only way for them to have success is to find their Prince Charming or whatever, um, because it's, the, the film is really, she kind of, you know, she kind of saves herself through a relationship that she has with this beautiful creature through nature, with animals, um, with with Everest, and, and, and all, all because of the heart that she has at the beginning of the film, um, wanting to help him. Yi is a lot of, is so much of Jill and so much of our relationship and our bonding was about how different we both felt as kids and how about how unrepresented we both felt um, with what we saw on screen when we were younger and even now. I mean, the fact that this is the first um, Asian American, you know, character in animation since Mulan. For me, the reason I got into this entire business was because of how important I think representation is on film and how much I wanted to kind of support myself as a as a young girl and seeing, you know, you don't have to be um, a man or a, you know, a white girl or um, a damsel in distress to see yourself on screen. You can, you can, you know, uh, there wasn't anything like that. So to be able to kind of like do it myself was kind of a weird pinch me moment. I, 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 you know, I think my younger self would be proud, which is, I don't say that lightly, so. Yi as a character felt so similar to how I was as a kid and felt so similar to the things that I guess being in LA for so long, the, the qualities um, of hers, her, her, curiosity and her stubbornness and her drive and her confidence were things I feel like I had lost um, after being in LA for a decade and she in in a weird way kind of uh, reminded me of who I was when I first got here and she, I feel you know this project in a weird way has kind of you know saved my life in a little bit so that was a big thing that drew me to the film. <laughs> It's an incredibly beautiful film. The craftsmanship that goes behind every single uh, shot of this film is unbelievably beautiful. And it's also showcasing something that we don't really see often, which is rural China. And the audience gets a peek into Chinese culture in a way I don't think we've seen really since, really seen ever. Not only that, but it stands out because it's, it's written and directed by a female and it's led by um, a female of color and that is, um, really rare and special and um, so I'm really honored to be a part of it. These kids are stripped, literally stripped of their phones, they're stripped of technology and they're on this kind of journey in nature which you don't you don't see a lot. Not only are I feel like because of phones and because of TVs and everything we're you know we're so um, immersed with technology but you just you you also just don't get the opportunity as much and so to see these these kids, these millennial kids kind of go on this journey without technology and discover themselves away from the kind of chaos of, of uh, being online. It's, it's, a, it's, a special, it's a special journey, especially with the added layer of, of Everest being magical. It's so centered around music, which is uh, just really exciting and really cool. Not only music, but specifically violin, which I feel like it's such a beautiful instrument and it's something that I don't think is, um, has really gotten enough airtime in, in, in media and movies and film. Um, and her connection with the violin is so beautiful and how much it means to her. Chloe! You look so good! Chloe! Chloe! Paparazzi, you got it. Culture and different, you know, Chinese culture and different perspectives, but it's also not about that at all. It's also about a young girl dealing with grief and trying to find herself. And it's such a universal story at the same time. And it's been really incredible to watch young girls react to this film, and especially young girls of Asian heritage, um, because it's, it, it is a, a story about a Chinese girl in China. and. The, the movie is rich with like
This is illegal. Sorry, you can't do this to us. Fucking bad. Why? Stop! Stop! What the? Oh my god. All, all I ever want. Oh my god. Leg. Fucking leg. Leg queen! Yes! Oh my god. I'm so. Look at that dress. Oh my fucking god. Are you even real? Like, so my hands shaking. Oh, super. <laughs> I want to say something. But... Oh my god. Should I say that you look stunning? I don't know. You're still taking pictures? Oh my god. She must be so tired. She's okay, so I should shut up. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. I can't. collide and your favorites meet each other look at this chloe and liz chloe and liz hi cinemark fans my name is albert Tsai. and i'm chloe bennett and we are peng and yi from dreamworks animation and pearl studios newest film abominable coming to theaters september 27th abominable is a beautiful film about three friends journey to help a yeti named everest find his way home find his way home and reunite him with his family, but they are also confronted by two greedy villains, Burnish and Dr. Zara, who, who chase them all the way across the Himalayas and are determined to catch Everest. What are you doing here, Everest? Oh, he must be here to celebrate his upcoming movie, of course. It's just a few weeks away, remember? Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> well, you heard Everest. We got to go and get him ready for his big movie debut. So make sure you get your tickets today and join us for the big celebration on September 27th. Whoa! You can do magic? Oh, this is amazing! Let's go. Come on, Everest. Come on. You guys, look at this lighting. If you get a whole bunch before it goes away. Don't worry. It's a video. This will be here forever.
Thank you.